How do? Are you in the market for some small violin planes? If you are, this might just be the video for you. This is not a sponsored video. Uh, I needed some violin planes for carving out the insides of guitars and ukuleles and things like that. So I had a quick scout through Amazon to see if I could find just a cheap set that will do me for the minimal times I actually need them. Now scouring through, you can get some super cheap ones and then some ones that are not quite so super cheap. And just looking at the photos, the really, really cheap ones look really rough. So I went a little bit more and spent about 60 pounds on a set of five and they came through the door. Now I knew they'd be small, but five planes in there? <laughs> really? So this is a set of Amun violin planes. Now Amun are a brand that I've heard of before. Um, they make quite a lot of musical instrument type things, guitar pedals and things like that. Uh, a very large Chinese brand, uh, but seem to be decent quality with everything that I've seen so far. So let's see, do these work straight out of the box? So here we go, one, two, three, four, five, getting smaller and smaller each time. That's ridiculously cute, isn't it? So there we go, five incredibly small, very cute planes, ranging from the flat bottomed one on here, so that's got a, a nice flat, exactly like a normal plane would have, but just really small. And then all of the rest of these have a curved sole to them, uh, both that way and that way, um, so that you can get in and scoop out the insides of violins is what they were originally for, and the smaller you go, and the more nooks and crannies you can get into. Now, however much money you spend on any kind of plane or chisel or anything like that, it should still need a final sharpening to get really kind of crisp towards that end piece. But they should come with blades that are at least pointy, and this is one of the problems with super cheap stuff, is sometimes those blades even have a flat end on because they're just rough ground so badly. Let's see if one of these, straight out of the box, can at least cut some wood. So here we go, this is a block of Moranti. This is actually what I'm building my current arched up ukulele. Uh, so does it cut? Yeah, straight out of the box we can take a corner edge in. And that wasn't harsh, that was uh, quite pleasant to work with. What about if I use it on the flat? Wow. <laughs> I am really impressed with that. Look at that, straight out of the box. I'm, this is not made up for television. This is straight out of the box. I can't believe that's actually done that. I've seen really expensive planes have rougher blades than that to start with. Very impressive, wow. Uh, what about the big stuff? Yeah, yeah, not so much, but again, some of this will be blade depth. So it definitely wanted to cut, but I think it was cutting too thick. Now all of these have this thumb screw. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay that on there and just tighten that up. So I think I've worked that to the, the correct depth. Does it work off the edges? Yeah, so I can do that with it. Tricky to hold because they're so small, but that's definitely cut. Okay, so all I'm doing is pushing it flat onto the wood and just kind of tapping in before tightening that up. And that's enough that at the correct tilt, it will actually start to take some off. Well, I'm absolutely amazed at how well they've worked straight out of the box. That's unbelievable. Uh, now they can be absolutely fine-tuned and smoothed out, sanded, sharpened even more so. The sharper you can have your tools, the less effort you're going to need, the safer you're gonna be, and the better quality that finish is gonna be as well. So I'm gonna go out and take these through my normal sharpening process using some um, sharpening papers and we'll come back and see if they cut any better. 
So here's the blade from the widest curved saw. Now you can see there that really has been ground down to a very sharp point. Uh, but you can see the tool marks left on by that grinder. So all we need to do is remove those tool marks and then you'll have a pristine edge very, very quickly. So after a quick pass, we can see it comes up to a shine pretty well. It's not perfectly flat, but being brutally honest, very few blades are. So a little bit more sanding and polishing to get this so it's got a complete shine all the way across that face. So turning our attention to the bevel side, you can see it's been hollow ground because it's been taken off at both edges and not in the middle. So it's been ground on a wheel which is why the uh, the centre section hasn't been touched yet, but that's absolutely fine because that centre section isn't important. It's only this very leading edge that's super important. So once we've got that to a shine, that's ready to go to work. So now let's set them on with the actual task in hand. Ooh, that's good. We like that. on these then well they come almost near as damn it sharp the build quality is really good the screw on there isn't a flimsy little thread you can really nip that up and be quite confident about it I've used even this tiny little one for about half an hour and I haven't got any abrasions or blisters on my fingers because there's no sharp edges they're quite pleasant to hold would I spend any more money than I have on these no i really really wouldn't spending more might get you some polished brass housing but i don't really care about that the only reason for me to spend a little bit more is if you would get the ones with the squirrel tails on just to make them slightly easier to hold but to be honest these are actually quite pleasant to work with and you can get in all the nooks and crannies with this as well i will leave a link in the description to get yourself a set of these and why wouldn't you at that price and if you're interested to see the final of this Archtop ukulele build, check out this playlist here because you'll love it. Until next time, sharpen your tools and I'll see you soon. God bless.